Hey everybody, Mr. Mack here. Today I'm going to get you started with this challenge for 111 surface area. We're going to be writing some equations and solving for an unknown variable that's going to require some factoring because we're going to get some quadratics. Uh, show your work, uh, sketches, units, etc., etc. Uh, for 1A, I have a rectangular prism with a, I got a width, length, and a height. So let's make a sketch here. And we could make a net out of this, but I think if I just do a good, somewhat of an isometric view here, we can, we can work with that. And maybe get a little bit thicker brush here. So what do we know? We know um, the width is 10. So when we call this width right here, millimeters, and we've got a length and we have a height and the length is two times as long as the height so we know that the length is whatever the height is times two so and we know let's see what else we have the surface area is 216 millimeters squared. Okay, so I have surface area is 216 millimeters squared. I know my width is 10 millimeters. Okay, so that's a fixed value that we know. We, we know our length is whatever the height is times 2, and the height we don't have anything for the height, so it's just height. Okay, so we know the surface area formula is surface area equals, we have two length times width rectangles. So in this case, the length and the width are going to be the bottom and the top rectangles. And then we have two length and heights. So the height, the length and the height are the front and the back side right here. Length times height. And then we have the right side here and this left side over here is width and height. So I have six total. So two plus two plus two is six. So my surface area is 216. I'm going to put that in on the left. And I've got two times L. So what are we calling L? Well, we're calling it 2H. And then my W is 10. So I'm going to put that in, plus 2L. What's L? We're calling that 2H again. 2, well, I'm using two different colors here. Hold up. Stick with moss. 2H times height, which is just H, right, plus to W, and W I know is 10, and H is just H. Okay, so now I've set this whole thing up. Let's we'll go ahead and evaluate, simplify these expressions here 
And so 2 times 2 times 10, we've got 40H. 2 times 2 times H times H, we have 4H squared. And then here we've got 20H. I'm going to zoom in here. Now, um, we got like terms here. Let's put those together. 60H. And how about we, we take the 4H, and I'm just going to 4H squared, and then just write it in front. And then I've got 216 over here. One thing we can do to s simplify this whole thing, I hope you see that, well, at least a 2 goes in everything, but actually 4 will divide into all of these. So 4 goes into 216 evenly. fifty four times. Four goes into sixty fifteen. So I have an H squared and an H. Uh, this means we have a quadratic. So that means we have to put this in standard form and then factor. Okay, so standard form is AX squared plus B x plus c equals 0. That's standard form. x in this case, our variable is h, so we need to subtract the 54 to the other side. So we have h squared plus 15 h minus 54. I could put equal 0 here on the left, or I can just say, oh, I'll just put it over here on the right. It's the same. And then now we need to find we need to find the factors of negative fifty four that add to fifteen. Okay, because that's negative fifty four there. We get the negative four when we multiply the last term in our FOIL, right? So we're undoing this trinomial, but we have to think, oh, well, if we have two binomials, how do we get this L? But the O and the I, the middle terms, are going to add to 15. So I know I've got to have H and H here, and i got 0 here. One of these has to be a plus, and one of these has to be a minus, because it's negative 54, right? So this one, it's not hard, but it's not super easy to see. So I suggest making a factor tree here, 54. And I know it's even, so 2 goes into it, 27, 3, and 9. Putting my prime numbers all on the left until I'm left with all prime. So here, these are all my factors of 54. And so one of these has to be negative, and I have to combine some other ones together. So for instance, right, I mean, six and, uh, negative 6 and 9 would be a potential pair, but this doesn't add to 15. So that means this one, this one should get smaller. So maybe I try, uh, how about 2, 3, and 27. So negative 2 and 27. That's too big, right? When I add that, I get 25. So how about we try negative 3. So I I'll I'll use the 3, and now I've got to put the rest of these together. So that's 9 and 2. It's 18. So negative 3 and 18, this will add to 15. 
And if I multiply those, I get negative 54. So those are my factors. So I have a h minus 3 and an h plus 18. And then we're going to split these into two separate linear equations and solve h plus 18 equals 0, h minus 3 equals 0, and I get a height of negative 18 and a height of 3. You can have a negative height, so we're going to throw that out and we're going to use 3. And let's see, if this height is 3, then the length, so this height would be 3 here, millimeters, and then the height would be 6 millimeters. And this is our solution. And that works. If I were to put all of those back into the original surface area equation, we would get 216 millimeters squared. Okay. So it says check the solution, so I guess we should do that. So I just did part C. Let's go ahead and check it. So part D here, surface area is 2LW plus 2LH plus 2WH. 2 times 6 times 10 plus 2 times... 6 times 3, just substituting my uh, values here for LW and H. 2 width is 10 and height is 3. And so we get 120. Uh, let's see, what do we get here? This is 36. And 20 times 3 is 60. Um, so I get 6. So maybe I just do it this way, right? Just add these together. So I get 6. Uh, 5, 6 is 11. Carrier 1, 2, 16. So that checked. All right. Let's take a look at this next one here. And this is the last one I'm going to do. A water tank is a cylinder. Okay. It has a height three times as long as the radius. The height, the height three times a height three times as long as a radius. Okay, so just trying to think about making it somewhat reasonable and make this dashed right here, hidden line. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's okay. What color is this going to be? Maybe, uh, and that whole thing went. Okay, so. I don't have any openings here. Oh, this looks all closed. Let's see. Yep. Okay. So, this is a height. And I've got a radius here. That's ugly. So the height is three times more than the radius. Height three times as long as the radius. OK. And we have a radius that we don't know, and we have a surface area that is three, sorry, 200, 200 pi, 
meters squared. All right. So we know the surface area equation is going to be we've got two circles, two pi r squareds, plus this rectangle that unravels. So, all right. So we know if I draw a net here, it's just a remind everybody where this equation comes from. So we got, here are my two circles. So right here, I hope that makes sense. Pi r squared are the two circles. Um, length times width is the area of this rectangle, right? Well, this width right here is actually the height of the cylinder. And this length right here is the circumference of the circle right there. So the circumference equation is 2 pi r. So really what we're doing here, I'll write it again. We got surface area equals 2 pi r squared. This length here is actually the same as the circumference. And this height right here is the same, this width rather is the same as the height. So 2 pi r h is the next part. So this is the whole equation right here for surface area of a cylinder. And now we're just going to substitute everything that we know. 200 pi, don't forget your pi, 2 pi times r squared, we don't know r, plus 2 pi r. Now h, we have an expression we can put in for h. We know that it is 3 times r, so 3r. And so I hope you guys see that we can divide out, well, 2 pi we divide out. see if we can make this as simple as possible. So 100 on the left. Got r squared. And here I got r times 3r. So that is 3r squared. r squared plus 3r squared is 4r squared equals 100. Okay, now let's see. I didn't say factor. We can solve this one just by isolating r right now. We, we don't need to put this in standard form. We could just divide by 4, and we get 4 goes in 125 times. And then how do we, how do we undo squaring? Well, we take square root is the inverse operation. So we take the square root of both sides. And we're going to get r equals plus or minus 5. Now, of course, negative 5 does not make sense for the radius. So we will use 5 meters. And if our radius is 5 meters, our height has to be 3 times that. It's going to be 15 meters. And we're going to check the solution. So we've got surface area equals 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h 2 pi times 5 squared plus 2 pi 5 times 15, and we want this to be 200. We're, we're checking to see, is this 200 pi on the left? So does the right equal the left? <clears throat> 5 squared is 25 times 2 is 50, so that's 50 pi. Um, 
2 times 5 is 10. 10 times 150 is 150 pi. And 50 plus 150 pi is 200. So that checked. All right. So that is the solution for uh, the cylinders height and radius. All right, everybody. I hope that makes sense. And there's still a couple more on the next page, but I think I'll let you see if you can figure out how to do those. All right. I'll see you all later.